Directed energy weapons like high energy lasers could be a game changer in future wars, but they've been in development for decades, and the DOD has yet to field these weapons at scale. Mark Gunzinger is a director at the Mitchell Institute and a former Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense. Mark, welcome. Thank you very much. All right, so what kind of target would these, um, would a directed energy weapon be used against? And to be clear, we're talking about laser, we're not talking about high-powered microwave. Right, lasers uh, that exist today are capable against rockets, artillery, mortars, uh, and increasingly they're becoming capable against uh, higher end threats like cruise missiles depending on the geometry of a shot. If you get a side shot on a cruise missile and you get a burn through on its thin skin, then that would be an effective kill. All right, so explain a little bit how these weapons actually work. Yeah, there's really two kinds of uh, uh, laser technologies right now. Distributed gain, which is a series of slabs, and you beam energy into uh, one and hit them serially, and it amplifies until you have a coherent beam of laser energy coming out the other end. And then you have spectral beam combination, which is a bunch of fiber lasers, individual lasers, kind of look like communications uh, 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 laser fibers. And they're spectrally combined to form, again, a coherent beam of energy that can uh, hit a, a target at uh, short to medium uh, ranges. So they use electricity. So where do they get their power source? Yes. Well, I'll tell you that um, the Army is scheduled to deploy a 300 kilowatt laser this November to a range to test it. And it'll be all contained on an Oshkosh heavy truck with a generator to provide the power source, the cooling, the laser and the beam director all contained, forming a, a highly mobile package that can emit a beam of energy of 300 kilo, kilowatts, which would be good for uh, uh, many different kinds of cruise missiles, as well as the other threats that I mentioned. So let's talk about the benefits, because one big benefit is you don't need to reload. There's no supply chain for ammunition. That's absolutely correct, and that's critical because our Air Force is, uh, and our Marine Corps, and, and of course the Army, is developing concepts for conducting highly distributed operations to reduce their vulnerability to attack by China and Russia and other adversaries. So if you're highly mobile, you move your um, basing your posture around frequently, you need mobile defenses. You need to reduce the logistics to support uh, those kinds of defenses. And that's exactly what directed energy weapons do. You don't need to reload them with large missiles like you would a, a Patriot missile battery. There's one other advantage. These weapons are electrically powered, so they're cheap. A laser shot might cost the price of uh, you and I going to Starbucks for coffee. Compared well, nothing to nothing in DOD is that cheap. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, but uh, compared to a $4.3 million Patriot missile, which doesn't make sense against some of the threats that uh, we would have to use them against today since we don't have operational lasers. All right, well, let's talk about the range, though, because is, doesn't it become more expensive as you get farther and you need more energy? Yes, uh, it, it does, but you also need better beam quality of lasers, too. It's not just the energy output, but the beam quality. And lasers are going to be best at short to medium range uh, uh, kills, uh, frankly. High power microwave weapons, uh, which we just barely touched on, uh, they're medium to longer range. But the fact is, you need a combination of kinetic and non kinetic, including directed energy weapons, to handle the the thousands of ballistic missiles, cruise missiles, uh, swarming UAVs, and other threats that our uh, military faces. You need both. What about bad weather? Because when you're talking about laser, it's not gonna work as well if there's a storm, if it's cloudy, how does that work? And that gets right back to the point it just made. You need both because they can, laser beams can be attenuated by uh, uh, weather. Uh, high power microwaves, not so much. Again, it's the combination of both that uh, you need to give our forces the kind of defensive capacity they need to survive in contested areas. And there was a, the Air Force Research Lab did uh, run a war game a couple months ago of that kind of hybrid between the high directed energy weapons and the kinetic ener uh, kinetic uh, weapons. That's exactly right. That and many other war games, some of which I've led, have shown is the combination of the two. The ability to have fire control systems integrate both kinetic defenses like 
Patriots, as I've mentioned, uh, THADs, and, and even lower cost kinetic interceptors with directed energy systems to choose the best tool to use against that threat that's uh, inbound. What do we know about the directed energy capabilities of China and of Russia? Uh, they are in full pursuit of those technologies and in some cases we may not be the first mover similar to uh, uh, what we see in hypersonic weapons. Um, give me an idea of the timeline. Um, when are we going to actually see these being deployed in the field and used? Now that's the really exciting part. Uh, the word for the last 30 years has been direct energies are always 10 years out. Five years from now, they're 10 years out. Well, guess what? Over the last six years, we went. We are now at 60 kilowatt lasers, and we're deploying a 30, 300 kilowatt laser this November, as I mentioned, uh, for testing. In another two years, we could be at uh, fielding those 300 kilowatt lasers, maybe even 500. And in five to six years, we'll be hitting megawatt class lasers, and those be effective against some kinds of ballistic missiles, including possibly and a ship ballistic missiles that uh, China have fielded to you know, attack our fleet. Do you think that the Defense Department is fully behind this and that the funding reflects that? I think the funding is beginning to reflect that. Uh, over the years I've seen a constant level of funding somewhere between 500 and 6 million per year going into research and development for all kinds of directed energy uh, uh, capabilities. Now, th that has been almost doubled in the last budget, but still, if you think about hypersonic weapons, that uh, last budget was about $3.8 uh, billion for hypersonic weapons. So directed energy weapon uh, research development and some acquisition is still about a third of that. All right, well, Mark, thanks so much for coming in. We'll see where this goes. My pleasure, thank you very much.